Okay, here we are set up to do some soldering. If you've watched my other videos, specifically if you watch the So You've Soldered Your First MCU board, I think that's what it was, um, and Fixing Bad Solder, this is the board that was in that video. Uh, and this is the one that I fixed. This is the same board, um, just, you know, an, a, another one that isn't soldered. Um, and I'm sure that people who are in the know, who've watched these videos, have thought to themselves, oh my god, he's soldering in a breadboard, and he's getting flux in the breadboard, and he's getting alcohol in the breadboard. I just wanted to say, everybody relax, this is actually a garbage breadboard, this is a cheap Chinese one, it's got fixture on it, uh, meaning that I use this as a fixture, I don't use this as a breadboard, it's, it's a really cheap one, I use this strictly as a soldering fixture. My goods uh, breadboards are actually globals, so I have them labeled global so that I can tell which is which. Um, and this is a global, this is a very good one. This one here, I think you pay less than a dollar for. This one here, you pay almost $10 for. So much, much better, better breadboard. I never solder in these, ever. Um, all my soldering I, I do in this one. And when I, get, when I get rosin, when I get flux in it, I just flush it out with the alcohol. And you guys have seen the tip of the alcohol bottle. Here's the the actual bottle. It's an isopropyl rinse bottle um, that I use. So let's go ahead and, and do some soldering here. So this is the, the board. It's it's not soldered. I've got my Chinese solder and my Chinese soldering iron here. So let's actually go ahead and see if this works. So again, if you've watched my other videos, you heat on one side of the pin, you put the solder on the other side of the pin. That way, the pin and the land, the pad, are hot enough to melt the solder so the solder will stick to them. If you only get the pin hot enough, what happens is the solder balls up on the pin and it doesn't stick to the land. So you want to heat both the pin and the land. So you want to put pressure on so that you're getting the pin and the land. Heat them and then bring the solder into the other side and it is not heating it up very quickly. So let's get a little bit of, it's dirty. Let's clean that off. Got a little bit of rosin burned on the end there. So we'll clean it off throw some solder on it to tin it, clean it, there we go. All right, let's try that again. So we're all clean, we'll go in here and we'll heat this and it's going to lift the board up a little bit and I'll push it back down again, there we go, all right. I'm just going to tack the two corners just so that it stays where I want it to be. It is not heating well, there we go. All right, so I think the problem that I'm having is that I'm not making good contact because it's such a small point on the soldering iron. So let's let's try to solder some more of these. I, I like to have some solder out so that I can handle it so that I don't have that thing in my hand. All right, so here we go. I'm going to try to solder this. So I'm going to get on here, pressure on the other side. It is not heating very well. There we go. Get a little bit of solder on the iron. It's going to heat better. But you want to come in always from the opposite side so that you're touching the pin and the land not the tip of the iron. You don't want to touch the tip of the iron because what that's going to do is that's going to melt the solder even if the pin and the land aren't hot enough to melt the solder. So the solder won't stick to them well. But that's how you do it. So you heat the far side, touch the solder to the near side. That's working okay. I mean, you saw I struggled a little bit there because the iron was a bit dirty and I wasn't making good thermal contact. But once I got rolling... It actually worked okay. So where am I at? Here, let's continue here. So the soldering iron's a little more dry now. I have to touch it just to, to get a, a thermal bridge. And see what I did there? It wasn't melting. So I went over and I touched the iron just to get a little bit of solder on it to, uh, to build a thermal bridge to the pin and the land. And then I came to the other side. So I touched the pin there. I touched the tip and then move around to the other side, and I'll show you that again. So if, if the iron is clean, it's not gonna make particularly good contact. So let's see if I can get it to heat out. So I, what I did there again is I touched the iron to create a thermal bridge and then moved around to the opposite side. So see, I'm heating the pin and the pad. That's working okay. I mean, it's definitely not as smooth as the Hacko is. I like to try this with the hacko. So let me turn on the hacko here. Get in here, and this is my 
my 1.6 millimeter chisel. So let's compare them. It's heating up there. 200, 300. There we go. All right, so a little bit of tin on it. All right, so what have we got left to do there? From there down. All right, so this, this is the hackle with the Chinese solder. So same thing, opposite side. So you can see, I mean, it, the Chinese one is actually doing a pretty decent job. The, you know, I'm soldering at basically the same speed that I am with the hackle. Put the hackle away and grab the Chinese one again. So it's, I mean, it is working. I think it's important to have a low angle with the soldering iron so that because if you're up like this, you know, if you're up at a high angle, only the tip is going to be touching and it's going to touch the pin and just have very little contact with the pad. But I think if you go down low like this, what it's going to do is, is you're going to get better contact with the side of, of the, the tip. So I have two left to do here. So you can see I'm quite low. I'm not getting good contact. There we go. And I, all I did was I turned the soldering iron a little bit just to get a little bit better contact. So that, that iron's working okay. Um, you know, it, it's not my favorite, but it certainly, it works. Uh, it is soldering that. And I mean, those are, for the most part, pretty good. They're a little bit heavy, not particularly consistent, but that's more me getting used to the iron and getting used to the feel of this solder. But it, it solders okay. Um, now the question is going to be, can I solder SOIX? And can I solder QFPs with this soldering iron? And one thing, when I was messing with this a little bit earlier, I, I was trying to position it in my hand, and I find it thick. And it's very front heavy, so you can see when I let go of it, it kind of tips out of my hand. And that may be partly because of the cord, but it is quite front heavy and thick. And the hackle is much thinner and it's back heavy. So what that means is that when I release it, it doesn't tend to lean forward. It's sitting comfortably in my hand and I find it very easy to manipulate with these, uh, you know, my, my two fingers and my thumb. I find it very easy to manipulate. This one is a little bit thick. I don't find it as easy to manipulate and it's a little bit slippery there. So it kind of slipped there when I tried to turn it and it slipped there again. But it's not a bad iron. Uh, you know, I mean, for $16, $15.88, it's okay. Uh, it does solder with some good technique. And I'm going to do a, a video on the theory of how solder works and good technique. That'll come soon. Uh, but this, eh, it's not bad. It's not bad. So let's actually try to solder some components and see what happens. So you know, my, my overall review, you know, cheap Chinese solder, cheap Chinese solder iron, eh, it works.